Hey there, people. That's a new start to the show. This is your host of the Wadcast podcast, Eddie Ift. I am your host. I do the show every single week. I never miss a week. That's right. I'm consistent. My wife told me I'm not consistent with anything. I'm consistent with the Wadcast. I bring it to you every week. I bring you the best guests in the entire fitness world. That's right. How's your fitness? I am uh I'm fitish right now. Those are the shirts I want to make. Fitish. Uh that's what I am. I'm fitish. I went for a bike ride today. Fifteen minutes as fast as I could. Back and forth up a mountain bike trail that I cut myself with a machete. Uh <laughs> yeah, so uh what are we getting into? I'm being weird. Uh just you know, it's stream of consciousness. I'm here in my house late at night. You know, we're in the middle of a pandemic. Don't know who to believe on anything right now. I have a great interview for you guys to hear. I should probably get right to it. Uh, today, uh, the show's brought to you by our friends at O2, who are the makers of our favorite non-carbonated recovery drink. That's right. It's my favorite. Should be your favorite. My dad's favorite now. My dad loves it. Uh, my daughter loves it. Everybody loves it. It's great. Uh, it's, uh, it's delicious. It's absolutely delicious. It gives you everything you need. All those electrolytes. I'm fasting right now. So, oh God, do I need electrolytes? Um, and, uh, it's O2. I I don't need to talk about them other than say it's the most delicious recovery drink there is. It's got, it's full of oxygen. It oxygenates, uh, your, it gets oxygen into your, into your system. It's oxygenated water. Have you ever heard of that? Well, you've had carbonated water. Well, this is oxygen in the water, not carbon dioxide. It has or it, it, it has oxygen. Uh, it's great. Detoxifies your liver. It gives you all the electrolytes you need, sodium, potassium, you name it. And they're doing something right now. Uh, they've launched a 50-50 campaign to support affiliates. It's been super successful. It's really helping out. And for a limited time, they're offering 50% off two to four week supplies of O2. That's one to four cases and free shipping at drinko2.com. That's drinko2.com. And they're capping this at four cases while the demand for water is high and the supply is low. And they're contributing 50% of the profits from this sale to support affiliates. Now more than ever, the affiliates need your help. Well, this is going to help you. It's going to help them. And you're going to love Drinko2. There's two that are caffeinated, two that aren't. There's one with CBD. Uh, I, I like them all, and I don't even drink caffeine, but I will have this because the caffeine's a natural caffeine, so it kind of slows into your system. It's kind of like the caffeine that's in green tea, I believe. I could be wrong. Don't quote me on that, but it's just so good. Uh, my my wife drinks all the caffeine ones. I drink the regular ones. So head over to drinko2.com, please. The prices are already marked down. Just type in your affiliate name in the order notes, Okay. Make sure you do that. Type in your affiliate name, and that will help out your affiliate. Uh, that's it, guys. Um, today's show, well, before we get to it, I want to thank everybody who's donated. Everybody. This means you. If you have given me a dollar, I really want to thank you because you help this show continue to exist. It is a struggle every once in a while. I do love it. It is a labor of love. Not a lot of money is made from this show. Uh, not enough to probably continue doing it. You know, it's not like I'm selling it to Spotify for $100 million like Joe Rogan. It's uh, it's basically like, uh, it's enough that I go, I like it, I enjoy it, and it's not too much of a hindrance, if you know what I mean. Like, if I was making zero money, I might not do it, just because it's got some work involved. I just wouldn't be as consistent as I am. So um, I do love the show. I love talking to the people I talk to. The hour, hour and a half, two hours that I talk to people, uh, fun, fun. I learn from them all. Um, <laughs> um, I love, uh, I love all you guys though. I really do. I, you guys help me out. Um, you write nice reviews in iTunes and, uh, you know, I just wish we were a little more active on social media as a group. You know what I mean? Like some of you write some funny stuff. It's, it's the, it's the, you know, same old guys though. You know, you got Gordon Wagner, Garth Willoughby, 
And I, I don't want to sound not grateful. I love those two men. But like some other you guys, come on, jump up, jump in, uh, get get better well known, be, better known with me. Um, send me some good stuff. Make fun of people. I need I need to laugh at people. These are some crazy times. I need some good I need some good humor. Don't don't send me any more black black penises. I've just seen way too many. You know the wood, the guy. You know what I'm talking about. Okay, if you don't, I found that not everybody knows what I'm talking about. And that's really awkward when you bring it up to people. You're like, how many pictures have you gotten of the big, you know, jacked black dude with the giant penis? And they're like, what are you talking about? Um, it's it's a meme and it's gone around during the coronavirus. Okay, back to uh, what I had to talk about. Thanking you guys. Thank you very much. I love the support. I love that you go to our Patreon, patreon.com slash podcast podcast or Wadcast Podcast. Uh, actually, it's just Wadcast. Um, or it's uh, wadcastpodcast.com slash Patreon. And if you give at least $5 a month, like Bill, all I got, Bill, is your name. Just Bill. And I have your email, so we're going to be sending you a, a, a message, Bill, to let you know you won a Myopux. There's probably a lot of Bills out there like, hey, did I? No, you didn't. Bill did. Bill won a Myopox and a Leopard Claw. I'm about to, right after the show, I'm going to get the Leopard Claw and I'm going to scrape my forearm. To uh, It's the only way I can get blood into that part of... It's all gooked up and I need to fix it. I have an unhealthy elbow. And uh, Leopard Claw is like a grass and it's just nicer. And it says Wadcast on it. It's gorgeous. And Myopox is a electronic muscle stimulator that I totally believe in. Stop icing. And use a Myopux. Learn about it. Learn why you use an electronic muscle stimulator and don't ice. And uh, But Bill, congratulations. You are... Uh, thanks for supporting. We really appreciate your help. Um, now, to the show. Um, there's been some announcements this week. A couple guys got busted for... for uh, well, they already got busted a while ago. But I think they're like no appeal or whatever it is. But they're taking 20 people to the games. That's it. There's no teams. No no masters. It's going to be a weird one. I'm wondering if there's going to be any media allowed there. Um, will Armin Hammer be at the ranch? That is the big question. Uh, this week, Hunter McIntyre. You hear this. This is going to go out on Thursday. Uh, Saturday, Hunter is trying to break the world record in Murph. Now, uh, Sunday, no, Tuesday, no, Monday, our time, Maddie, uh, Maddie White will be trying to break the record in Australia. Uh, but the guest I had on today has maybe the unofficial record. Uh, this guy does it, I think it was for two weeks straight, uh, did Murph. Or two weeks, two years straight, every week. Uh, an incredible guy. Uh, runs Garage Gym Athlete. You might be familiar with it. Uh, he programs, he coaches, he's, he's a former vet. He, uh, he is an author. He's got a new book coming out called Killing Comfort. He's done some, uh, some pretty crazy things and um, does it all working out in his gym at home. He's a father, too. That's very important, should be mentioned, because it's... It's a lot more difficult than I ever thought it was till I became one. Uh, so his name, if I didn't mention it, is Jared Moon. Uh, I enjoyed talking to him. I hope you enjoy it. We talk a lot about Murph, and we get into his uh, past. Uh, the guy was a, a fighter pilot or training to be one. Pretty cool stuff. Uh, I've never really talked to one of those guys, so it was, it was fun. Uh, I hope you enjoy this episode. Hope you guys are having a good time. I hope you're all doing Murph this week and uh, doing it for all the right reasons to uh, sacrifice and remember uh, the guys who uh, put their lives on the line so that you can get on Facebook and bitch at each other. All right. There's some guys out there with a higher purpose and uh, they've, they've sacrificed everything. They have families too. So, uh, Michael P. Murphy, uh, I salute you. I don't know if I will be doing it because of this elbow. I hope I am, even if I have to walk it. 
uh, and take 12 hours this time. I, I think I should do it, but I'll be doing it on Monday and we'll, we'll, we'll be telling you next week how Hunter did. So I know he's in North Carolina right now and, uh, you can follow him probably somewhere on his Instagram. Uh, maybe you'll watch him do it live. Uh, but good luck to Hunter and, uh, enjoy this episode with a guy who's already done Murph too many times, Jared Moon. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Wadcast Podcast. I am your host, Eddie Ift. Uh, I am here with Jared. Am I pronouncing it right? Jared Moon? That's correct. It's a it's a different spelling, though, right? Yeah, it is. And uh, my parents wanted to be different. So. Yeah. Okay. I thought it was maybe, <laughs> you know, like Jarrell or something, like they were into Superman or uh, who knows. Um, Jared, um, this is a we're, – we're on the uh, – we've been talking about Murph for about a month now. Um, it's, it's a favorite workout of mine. I think it's a, it's an amazing thing to recognize, uh, Michael Murphy and what he did. And I think it encapsulates CrossFit in general when, you know, when I saw these hero workouts, when I first started getting into it and I was like, oh, that's really cool how they honor these guys and, um, such a hard workout and, uh, such a good way to get through it by thinking about someone who sacrificed for all of us. And I'm not usually a raw, raw guy in the least bit. But for some reason, this one gets me. And I've always been enamored of Special Forces guys and how elite they are and, you know, how how they really devote their life to it. So um, it's a great workout. But then there's this buffoon named Hunter McIntyre, who um, I have no respect for at all. Um, he's a friend of mine, but he just drives me insane. And <laughs> he's always up to different stunt here or there. And he's uh, decided that he wants to break the world record. And he's actually doing it. Um, I forget the name. I, I have his charity here that I do want to. I want to push out his charity because it is. It's a great charity. Hunter's not a great person, but at least he's doing something good for once in his life. So, um, and his thing, just like trying to get into the CrossFit Games, he's just uh, he's just trying to break the world record in uh, in hey, here it is. It's a uh, it is the the, the uh, organization that you can you can go to donate dot team rwb dot org. Um, he's raised already uh, fifty five hundred dollars, which I'm uh, I'm I'm pretty proud of him for doing. Um, and uh, it all probably came from his dad. Uh, but uh, it's uh, team RWB is um, there's 250,000 active duty service members transition out of the military, joining the 3.5 million post 9-11 veterans already living in communities nationwide. They face many uh, challenges, including isolation, weight gain, lack of purpose and other health issues. Team Red, White and Blue, which is the charity, is the antidote to the isolation and health challenges they face. So uh, these guys are supporting veterans. Uh, you yourself, Jared, veteran. Yes. What were you? Uh, what service were you in? I was in the Air Force. Okay. And uh, so I, I've been combing the internet and hearing from fans all about uh, who are the uh, psychopaths that do this a lot. And apparently, you're a regular. You are. Uh, you've done this how many times? Uh, over two hundred now. <laughs> have you have you been to a therapist? <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, you would think I'm a masochist at some point, but after. After a certain number, it just becomes, you know, a workout. But yeah, I, I've done it a lot. And, and that's a, the 200 number is a span of a very long time. I, I found out about the Murph workout before I even knew 
before I even knew what CrossFit was and before it was called Murph, like, I mean, it was, it was probably called Murph, but I, a buddy of mine who was a Marine told me about the workout and was like, you got to try this. And I was, I was like, that was back in like 2006 or seven. I was like, oh yeah, I'll do that workout. And I tried it. I did. And I, I did that workout often. I didn't even know it was like in memory of somebody or that it was called Murph named after uh, Lieutenant Michael P. Murphy or anything like that. So I got into it very early. And then more recently is when I started to do it regularly. Um, I forget what the name was, but there body was, armor. oh, it was body armor. Uh, yeah. Are you talking about the original name of the Murph? original okay. name. Yeah. It was yeah, called yeah. body armor because uh, it was his favorite workout. Mm-hmm. And, and I think they showed that in Lone Survivor, like in the beginning, he was doing it or something. Uh, but uh, yeah, it was. Yeah, I found out about CrossFit sort of the same way, like a military uh, relative, and I had never seen Murph though till till I got into it. And I I've done it both ways. I've done it with and without the vest, and I've so, I saw a video of you doing it with a forty pound vest. Yeah, I've done it. So the I so I did it every week for a year for two years. You know, and uh, the first year I did it, I every 10th time I tried to do something just really challenging. So I did a triple Murph, a double Murph, 40 pound vest Murph, like all these different ways on the 10th one. So 10, 20, 30, 40, and then number 50, I just tried to make it ridiculous. And so, yeah, those are the times where I was like, just whatever I could think of. And sometimes I'd let people vote on Instagram, like, what should I do? And of course, they'd just pick the nastiest thing I could I could possibly do and that's what I'd end up doing if if this is your first time listening to the show and you're not that familiar with CrossFit uh, we're talking about the the workout Murph is a uh, run a mile 100 pull-ups 200 push-ups 300 squats then run a mile um, the the uh, the 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 real diehards say you have to have a vest on to do it and uh, apparently you can't partition it for um, for the records whatever whoever made up that rule but you're saying you, I, I saw somewhere you said you can go much faster partitioning. Yeah, and that's, and I don't. I mean, I don't think that's a rule anywhere unless Hunter. I, so they've done it in the CrossFit Games twice, right? Yeah. And yeah. I, be, I believe the first time was not partitioned, and then the second time was partitioned. To my understanding, I've not been an avid follower of the games in, in recent history, uh, but they went much faster when it was uh, partitioned and. So I don't know if he's trying to beat a time that's already been set in a competition setting, and that's why. But in the workout itself, originally posted, you absolutely can partition the repetitions. I don't know where the the rule came from. The rule came from, uh, you know, if, and, and so, I get. So like, I remember them doing it. It must have been like 2012, maybe. I could be wrong. 2012, I was there at the Santa Monica Pier. They did it in in like dry sand, which is ridiculous, ridiculous. And I remember them. That's where they didn't partition. And I had done the workout, but I had partitioned. And I was like, oh, my God, they can't. Oh, this is going to be miserable. And they all looked like they were dying. Um, then uh, then they did it in two fifteen and or 2015 and 2016, I think. I could be wrong. 2016, they did it 20 or what was it? It was like broken up. 20 30 40 or something they did five yeah. rounds does that make sense does that make 300 uh It'd be two four six two four six that's what it was yeah. so 20 40 60 and um looked brutal too but um i know hunter the way he's doing it he's doing it unpartitioned and last week we had a guy on uh out of australia maddie way who says he's gone under 30 in it um have you gone under 30 uh unpartitioned yeah partition yeah Either. i've gone under 30 I've gone under 30 in both. <laughs> so what about uh, this Memorial Day? Are you going to give it a shot? Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, I have I have plans for going full uniform this Memorial Day. I don't know if that'll add some time. It'll most likely make me a little bit slower. But I'm, I'm going in uniform and boots and vest on just a proper day Memorial uh, Murph. But, you know, if Hunter um, throws down a pretty interesting time, it's something I would like to... I mean, it's not like I only save this workout for Memorial Day, so it's something I'm interested in. I, I'd like to see see what he does and yeah. see if uh, it's something I should should try and beat. Yeah. Um, how fast are you as a runner? Uh, I'm only fast at the mile, which is funny. Um, it, it, you know, as a as a runner in general, I'm I'm probably not very fast. If you want to talk like three miles, four miles, anything like that, not very fast. But uh, I was a sprinter in high school, and um, I I can go pretty fast in the mile, and that's that's about it. Like, you know, give me your mile time. 
my fastest mile time is 515. That's pretty in fast. Murph, in Murph, I typically hit it at around, right around six, where I don't redline it completely. Wow. Wow. If I tried to run a six minute mile, I'd be throwing up in the bushes. Uh, yep. That's, that, that's, <laughs> I, I haven't run a six minute mile in so long. I remember when I first got back into CrossFit. Uh, you know, I was in my thirties when I started it and I was like, Oh yeah, I'm good now. And I was like, ah, I'm going to go out and break a six minute mile. And I ran it on the beach and I just came in at like six fifteen, and I was literally like dead. I was like, or, I might've made sick. I forget because whatever it did, it, it crushed me. It yeah, like, it, it, I couldn't imagine doing a pull up after it. I was like lying on the ground. Like that was the end of the workout. And you lose it fast. I mean, there've been times where I'm not running as much and then I, uh, cause I, I last year or two, I've picked up cycling and so I've been running a lot less and then I transitioned back to running and it's like, just crushes me to do the six minute mile. Then, you know, you throw some run training back in and it comes back pretty fast. But, um, you've, you've done all kinds of crazy stuff. I was going through your Instagram. You've like done marathons and, uh, didn't you do what's your, what's your, you did a marathon and a, a deadlift in the same day, which is, I think it's Austin Maliola did that. Yeah. So, and he got all the credit for it. Mine was like nobody really knows about. Yeah, so it was a triple body weight deadlift, 540 for me at the time because I was a 180 pound body weight, and then a marathon. My marathon was on a quarter mile track. It wasn't like a like he he ran it in an actual marathon. Right. You know what I mean? Like he like a sanctioned thing. It was just a bunch of dudes um, from my unit when I was in the military. We were like, let's run a marathon. Where at? We run on the track. Let's go run 105 laps on the track. So that's, we ran a marathon on the track. You really need a therapist. You know that. <laughs> yeah. I probably Anybody do. that can run around a track, hundred. you know who can do that? Animals. Animals can <laughs> run around a track and you'd lead them with like some other animal. They would chase an animal for food. They don't just go, hey, let's go run 105 miles. You're a psychopath. Uh, yeah. The, 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 circle, the circle part of that made it way worse than, because I've ran other things since then. Um and having a place to go makes it a lot more fun. How many other guys did it with you? We started with close to 20 and uh, we finished with two. So me and one other guy and, and other people, they made it really far. Like, you know, it was kind of like the Forrest Gump thing, you know, like yeah. when Forrest Gump decides to stop running, like that just happened to people. Like some people stopped at like six miles and then one guy got to like 20 and he was just like, he wasn't, he didn't even look tired. He's just like, I'm good. I don't get that when people quit that close to the finish yeah i didn't get it either he was like one of the the strongest runners too there and he had been ahead of us uh, me and the other guy who finished the whole time and i was like he's crushing it and then he was just nothing wrong he was just like ah i'm done with that i'm like my my biggest claim to fame i did a 68 mile run across the backbone mountains with hunter actually and we started with like i forget like 15 or something and ended with four and the last stage, the very final place where, because we had all these rest stops to, to like refuel, I saw like three or four guys drop out. And I'm like, <laughs> you just ran 50 miles. Why right. are you going to quit right now? And to me, it just, it, it made me angry. And Hunter was mad too. I was like, what's wrong with you guys? Like, you don't quit. Like, there's, I don't, and it wasn't even like they were injured or they just, they gave up and it pissed me off so bad. It, like, but I, I think it made me stronger too, because I'm not a, you know, an athlete by any means at this point in my life. And, um, these guys all were, they were all like Spartan racers and, you know, like competitive ones. And when they quit, it's like David Goggins says, like stealing souls. I felt yeah. like I gathered strength from them. I was like, thank you for being <laughs> such a pussy. Cause now I feel better. Like, I feel like, I just, uh, it gave me a little confidence that like, if they quit, it should have been the other way. I'm like, if these guys are sensible enough to quit right now, I should probably think about it. <laughs> I shouldn't have been out here and, uh, they, I'm probably doing like damage that I can't even feel right now. Cause I'm in this like hallucinating, but, um, no, but I, I that's impressive. I want to know. So when you did your, uh, your marathon, did you deadlifted before it or after it? Um, it was before. Yeah. I was going to say it'd be pretty yeah. hard to, yeah to do the deadlift after yeah just to and i was pretty broken after i mean i'm these things were just not not trained like i was a trained human as in i i work out and train um often and, and even more so at that point but i was not running right. you know i was not i was not a runner so it just it absolutely destroyed me the recovery from an untrained marathon was pretty brutal it's got to be brutal you were active duty too at the time right 
Yeah, I was. Yeah. Yeah. So you had to show up for work the next day. Yeah. I mean, well, we did it. I think we did it on a Saturday. And so it, I had about a day yeah. you know, to, to recover from it. You absolutely need Monday. that. I, I could find that impossible to go to work the next day after a, yeah, an untrained marathon. Um, <laughs> that's still a pretty heavy deadlift, too, for somebody that's... How, how much did you say you weigh? Uh, at that time, I was 180. Now I'm about 185. I actually lost weight intentionally where I could say it was triple body weight because um, I was about one, 190, 192 in preparation for the triple body weight deadlift. And then I was like, I'm not going to make it. I'm going to have to... I either have to get stronger or cut weight. So I cut weight to 180 and then deadlifted that and then ran that's still pretty impressive i know hunter's hunter's claim to fame he did 500 and uh then ran a five minute mile yeah that's fast see i've never ran that fast i mean yeah i I mentioned my fastest time i'm i can't get into that lower that i haven't uh, gotten into that lower lower time that fast speed i was uh i find that super impressive when austin maliola told me that he did that uh i gotta be honest i I was not impressed because his marathon time was so poor that not mm-hmm. poor. I mean, for the average person, it's good. But for one of the fittest guys in the world, I would think that he should put up a better marathon time. Like I just heard James Newberry did uh, an Ironman and his time was super impressive. And his marathon time was pretty impressive at the end of an Ironman. And it was way faster than Austin Maliola's without the bike and the swim. And so I, I uh, nothing against Austin because he's an impressive athlete, but just come on, dude, you can do a better marathon than that. Uh, yeah, I think uh, he probably could have too. He may, I don't know if he's ever ran a marathon before. He may have just been saving himself a little bit and overdid that. Yeah. Um, cautious mentality. Yeah. I wonder if they threw a marathon into the CrossFit games, what these guys would, would come in at. Cause it's a, you know, they have to perform and maybe if they gave them like a day off afterwards, yeah, that's the that was what I, my point is like. Uh, CrossFit athletes are impressive athletes, but I don't think I don't think they would be prepared for the damage. Like it had to be like the last thing they do or the first, first thing, thing, and yeah. they get some rest. And, well, they uh, did they did the marathon row, which right. is insane. Yeah, insane. And, and they had some incredible times. It's just way more low impact. You know. Yeah, like, true. Lower, lower. True. Like, I I think their knees would be so swollen and jacked up if you throw in thrusters the next day. Yeah. It's just like, yeah, it's going to be bad. Yeah. I had this thing called Chondro Malaysia after I did the 68 miles that was just brutal. I couldn't do a lunge. And yeah, uh, uh, yeah they, but those guys, I, I don't know. They're, they're so trained. Have you, uh, do you, have you ever competed at all in CrossFit? Um, I, I did the open. I mean, so I was, I was in CrossFit um, pretty early on. So like the very first open, I did the first open and wow. then I did the first first like i did a year after that but it always uh it always got jacked up because i was trying to do the online qualifier Mm -hmm. um where you'd submit a video or something and i was always between um training schools in the military i'd miss a workout every year like outside of my control like uh i'm i'm moving like i can't submit a video i'm not even allowed to have a camera something like that would um there would always be one workout that jacked me up every year but i think the first year that i think it was 2011 um, when they did the first open where you could submit videos online, I did the full thing then. But then every year after that, I always got screwed up and actually com- completing it. Are you still in the military now? No, I'm not. Okay. Yeah, I'm out. Um, yeah. But you, you've you had a business forever, Garage Gym Athlete. So you've never been in a CrossFit gym. You're, you've always been training at home? Or yeah, at- I've been training in a garage for several years. Um, I, I guess it's been 10 years now. Yeah, I've been in my garage training. Yeah, I do the same. I don't know how you do it because I, I can't motivate. I need that three, two, one go and other yeah. people. I I mean, I, I will sit in my house and talk about how I'm going to work out from like uh, about 10 a.m. till about 9 p.m. sometimes where I finally <laughs> go out there and do a workout. So I don't know how you do it. Hey, I mean, people help. I know current times makes it a little bit more challenging. You could invite training partners over like this Memorial Day. I'll have a buddy over for Murph because – Doing it in uniform is just going to add an element that would give me an excuse to go a little bit slower. But if he's there, I won't go slower. And so, you know, it's it's good to have that training partner from time to time. Well, you also have to think about Hunter. Yeah. Well, (laughs) (laughs) you know, and I think really it's it's Murph, man, like just Memorial Day in general. And that's why I love the workout. And that's why I love how you started this podcast is just the memory of the fallen. You know, that's what that's what will make me like dig so deep that I just 
I, yeah, I don't want anything more to, and to move faster. And, and that's my, my mode of, of expression is, is physical movement, physical culture. Other people could find that through, through different things. But I think that memory, um, is very important, especially when you've stood next to the children and wives of men who are coming home in boxes, yeah. you know, and, and you see that and you're like, it just puts the workout on a different level for me. And I don't mess around once it's time to do that. And I, I remember why I'm doing it every time. And um, while I like to go fast, that's never, never really been the point. Yeah. Um, like I said before, I'm not a raw, raw guy. And I'm, I'm not even very patriotic um, because I just I, there's so much I see in a country where there's just so much division and so much, you know, the 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 powers that be manipulate and do whatever they do. And I have all my political reasoning, but when it comes to like brotherhood, I have this, I have this weird kind of kinship with anybody in a situation that is with you. And, and I can see the military, you know, you guys, the guys that fight beside you and this allegiance that you could have for each other, that I can see that. And I can see why it's so strong for anyone in the military or, and why I have respect for you guys, because in your situation, I think I think I could feel that. I don't I don't know how I would have ever done, you know, because no one really knows. But uh but I do I get that brother that brotherhood and that that uh you know, this guy sacrificed for and I kinda I think I saw that in that movie. Um where a lot of times it's it's you know, the the country thing goes out of the way and it does become you're right there with your guys and your boys are right next to you. And you know, I, the, 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 the I, I, I just can't even imagine. I just, I just know that like when tragedy happens or, or uh, a tough, like perilous situation, um, people kind of rise together and there's kind of this tribe thing. I saw it here when we had fires and I live in Malibu and mm-hmm. uh, we had fires and it just became kind of us versus them. Like we were, it's weird. the, the police were blocking the roads and there were old people that couldn't get out and people staying in. And you were kind of like, we all had to work together to get supplies to people and worry about other friends and neighbors, homes burning down. So it, it, it becomes this, this brother brotherhood kind of thing. So, so I do respect it so much for that reason. And, uh, um, and I, I, I just think it's, I think it's awesome. And I think it's an awesome workout and I can't believe you've done it this many times i really think there's something wrong with you have i mentioned that have you ta- yeah have you, have you few ta- times have you talked to a therapist ever <laughs> no i mean i i've chilled out more you know i have uh i have three kids and, and running a business and stuff i've chilled out a little bit so murph is really kind of like my only thing i'm not doing as many like events and crazy stuff like that really just tr- not trying to take any time away from the family because you know that you have to go to those events you're normally gone for a long time recovery affects the family and so, yeah, Murph is like my only thing left where I'm like, I could do this in the the garage and, you know, it's not going to affect my my life or take me away from the kids. And so it's the last place I'm really like pushing myself. Have you hard. seen have you seen the guys that have done uh, uh, like 24 hours of Murph? I have. Uh, see, I, John Sullivan. Sullivan. Right? Sullivan. Yeah, yeah, I had him had, on. The, I had him on a few weeks ago. Great, great guy. Yeah. So I'm, I'm very familiar with him. Um, we just I don't know, like. I don't know if there is one, but the Murph community, if you want just people who are doing crazy Murph things end up finding each other. Um, we had an athlete in, um, her name is Lisa Kelly. She's a female who did the same thing. She did 20, she might hold the unofficial record for females of Murph and as many Murphs as possible in 24 hours. And those are, um, those are really crazy. My hat's off to John, off to Lisa. That's some, those, those are some pretty inc- incredible things right there. How come you've never tried that one? I, I'm just I'm I'm in a different mindset about these things. Like I've seen people do um, the 24 hours. I've seen people do it like every day for a month. You know all these things, and and I've always been really big on on training and yeah. being smart about training. And so I have you know Monday through Friday I train um, with a you know well thought out you know periodized program. And then Saturday I do something really hard that's kind of not on the program and it, Murph or something else like that. And so I'm just, I'm, I'm trying to put these hard things in, in a part of a larger training program. Um, and I just don't think I would want to do 30 days of the workout every single day or 24 hours. Like, does it still, know, like, does it still beat you up at this point? No, it really doesn't. And like, 
So if you do it every week, how I did the first year, it really took about 16 weeks. So that's 16 Murph workouts before I wasn't just dead. Like I, I would go really hard and especially Texas summers make like it, it brings it up to a different level. Like oh, it's, I, ridiculous. I, it's awful there. And so then, you know, I would, um, I'd be kind of toast the rest of the Saturday. Like you're talking about like uh, earlier, I was like mentioning affecting family. It kind of would, like I would be kind of a zombie for the rest of the day. I'd go to sleep super early and I'd be sore. Um, that took about 16 weeks. Once that kind of went away, that wasn't as much of a factor. And now it just had never, I guess, because I've kind of maintained at least a moderate level of, of fitness for that workout. It doesn't take a huge toll on my body. Um, I will say in the around three quarters of the way in the second year, um, my knee got pretty tweaked and it wasn't anything like it was really just overuse. You know, I went to a physical mm -hmm. therapist I'm doing a lot of best at squats every single week on top of regular training. Um, that was the only thing that's ever really happened to me that was kind of negative. So I had to chill out for a couple of weeks, but I, I bounced back after a month or two. Um, but when it comes to like you said, you missed a lot of the uh you were never able to get really uh, an open in like the full thing. Are your times competitive? I mean, it seems like anyone that can put up the times you're doing in Murph should should it's a it's a pretty good gauge of fitness. So you should be up there when it comes to and you got yeah. you got a pretty strong deadlift. I'm wondering what your snatch and your clean and jerk are because those are if if those yeah. are up there. No, so I kind of gave up on Olympic lifting. Uh, I'd say about two years ago. So I really don't participate in that much. And I mean, compared to what games athletes are doing today, no, I, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't stand a chance against them. I have some weird ability to string a lot of calisthenics together and run a mile really fast. But if you want to do, uh, you know, barbell thrusters and, and burpees, you're probably going to probably going to beat me. So I, I think I, I maybe was my most competitive towards the start when mm -hmm. things were kind of taking off and rich was, you know, rich froning was a big part of that. And, uh, these days, I mean, I probably could have worked my ass off back then, uh, no, and maybe been a good regionals athlete, you know, maybe if, if I was lucky, the bottom of the CrossFit games back when they used to take a lot of, a lot more people now that it's so serious, I wouldn't be competitive. I think in the slightest in the CrossFit community. Wow. Is that just there's too many? There's too many skills, man. There's too many. Yeah, you got to be good at too many things. I'm just I'm not trying to to be good at all those things. Um, like I said, I'm not a huge fan of Olympic weightlifting anymore. Um, but yeah, if you want to run and do push ups, let's go. But anything else? Um, why not? Why Why are you not a fan of the Olympic weightlifting? Uh, it's just not something I enjoy. I okay. mean, to be honest, like it's not. I, I there's nothing negative about it. I mean, I no, I agree I mean, with you. I'm the same way. Yeah, I'm just not a huge fan of it. Um, it's like golf. That's you know? I, I compare it to golf all the time. Yeah, it's like golf to where like you're never going to perfect it. And it's just if it's golf doesn't interest me either. So I'm not going to go golf and all the benefits you can get from Olympic lifting. You can get through like dynamic lifting. If you want to be explosive or plyometrics, you can you can get all the benefits and then you can still lift heavy. So I didn't see an actual need to be to have that in my training. So I just I used to still do it anyway, because it was more of like train your weaknesses type of thing. And then over time, I'm like, I just, I'm just not interested in the snatch and I, I don't think it's that cool, you know, so I just stopped. I always say it never got me laid and it never made me money, so I don't really work on it. Uh, but yeah, the, the, the other thing is when you say golf, the, I compare it to golf and the, it's like being on the range and practicing your golf swing over and over and over and over. That's what a snatch is like. But where golf is more fun is that then you take that golf swing and you go apply it on different parts of the course to different right. shots where the snatch is same bar, same weights, same platform, just, you know, just upping it each time and putting a little more, putting another two and a half pound plate on there, putting it. And just to me, I mean, that is the definition of boring. And, uh, now, like those lifts got astronomical real fast too. people. They got so good. So good. You cro like elite CrossFit athlete. Cause I think when I, so that my best numbers, um, trying to recall, like, I think the most my snatch ever got to was like somewhere between 205, maybe 215. And that was like good at that time right. in CrossFit. Right. And now these days, that's like people yeah. are warming up with that before the show starts. You yeah. Know? Yeah. And, uh, and so, yeah, I just, um, I never really pushed it beyond that. Cause I didn't, I was like, I just not interested in it, you know? Yeah. It's, uh, it's it's amazing how much they are snatching and i used to watch it i used to watch guys in my gym that that would excel at it and i was like this is a different mindset or i couldn't 
and and probably one of the reasons I don't like usually people like things that they're really good at and mm-hmm. uh, I wasn't good at it so I just I, I don't have mobility I have a bad ankle I broke my ankle and have a metal plate in it so that restricts my ankle mobility which you know affects everything but uh, I just had difficulty with it and I was like oh, f- f- screw this this is just a this is boring ish I like clean and jerk a little bit better but but even that I was like this is too much weight. I have too much chance of hurting myself because my form's not perfect. And I just rather, like you said, stick to other, other things that are going to, um, you know, not challenge me more, but be more exciting and more fun. And, um, you know, my, I CrossFit to do other things in life. I don't CrossFit to CrossFit. Um, but you, you, your business that you have, uh, garage gym athlete, you've been doing that for how long? So Garage Gym Athlete, I would say, officially launched in 2016. Okay. Yeah, and so since then, so four years, like, aggressively, like, uh, you know, taking on new athletes. Every, like, I, I had a free workout programming going back to, like, 2012 that was technically Garage Gym Athlete, but everything was, was free, and, like, you know, it was just people, you know, another WOD website type thing back then, and, and we transitioned to being more serious about it in, in 2016 and, and have been ever since. And so you program and uh, have what's your website? Uh, so yeah, garagegymathlete dot com. If you want to check out that, um, and then into three fitness dot com, where we do a lot of programming uh, things like that. That's uh, and, and we're more, you know, we don't do traditional CrossFit. Like like if someone was listening to this and they're like, well, you don't you don't snatch. Yeah, we don't put it in the programming either. You know, it's more strength and conditioning, concurrent training stuff. Um, we, we don't work on skills and everything else, but we're trying to like, just maximize the, the raw fitness side of things. As you know, everyone is facing challenges with the recent virus pandemic from stress, financial sickness, and quarantines. There's not a lot of people who haven't been touched by it. One of the highest risk factors of a weakened immune system and a lot of what affects that weakened system is determined by your gut health. Gut issues aren't just about bloating or indigestion. They can be the difference between whether you get sick or or stay well. Unfortunately, your gut is under assault like never before in human history. That's why I asked my friends at BioOptimizers to help people during these hard times. To help out, BioOptimizers is giving away a free bottle of their patented proteolytic probiotic P3OM until the end of this month. As you know, I'm a fan of P3OM, and I've talked about it multiple times on this show. There's a good reason for that. It's because P3OM helps eliminate bad bacteria and pathogens and rapidly boosts your gut health and therefore also boosts immunity. But P3OM also does something no other probiotic can claim. It has a patent filling that explicitly talks about its research around antiviral capabilities. This makes P3OM the perfect probiotic to help support your immunity and that of those you love during this difficult crisis. This is truly a generous offer. Go to www.p3om.com slash wadcast free. That's p3om.com forward slash wadcast free. That's all one word, wadcast free. You will automatically get access to your unique coupon code to claim your free bottle. This is limited to one per household, and this offer is only available at www.p3om.com forward slash wadcast free. So uh, my wife and I are talking about driving from uh, L.A. to North Carolina. Because uh, we don't want to get on a plane. We're afraid. We got little kids. I got to be careful. I got kids. I got a 10-month-old. On a plane, he's going to touch everything, put his hands in his mouth. So we're thinking about renting a, uh, a Winnebago, getting on the Winnebago, driving straight across the country, staying in campgrounds, eating all our own food, and you know, not touching anything, going to the bathroom, you know, like staying away from everyone just to get to uh, our in-laws, my in-laws, her parents. And uh, we were thinking about packing food. What are we going to do? And I was like, oh, my God, I have the greatest solution ever. 
eat the 80. Um, eat the 80 are frozen meals that are frozen, refrigerated, whatever they are. Whatever they are, they're the best thing you'll ever taste in your life. Um, I was on the phone with a high school group the other day of friends. We were talking. And I was like, you guys all have to try this. It's it's the best tasting prepared meal subscription out there. It's uh, If you read the reviews, that's what everybody's saying. Everybody says it. It is so damn good. I was making a joke. I was filming myself making it. And I'm like, I would leave my wife for whoever cooks at Eat the 80. It's so good. And right now, it's the best thing you can do. If you're trying to stay healthy, a lot of people are gaining weight. You're not going to. They got 100% gluten-free. They got Whole30 options. They got vegetarian. They got keto. They have macro-balanced uh, it only takes a few minutes to heat up into microwave, or you can do it on the stove, or you can do it in the oven, whatever you want to do. I mean, why not just do it in the microwave? Um, one of the things I like, it's really important to me. My daughter is the biggest animal lover in the world. And so uh, I like to know that all the animal protein is ethically sourced and these guys do it. And it's, they're super clean. They go above and beyond uh, all the standards that you have to have. Um, the food's vacuum sealed and their kitchen is where they, make this stuff is on another level of it 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 goes by every state local federal level and they're just super super clean especially right now they all use protective gear when they box it and ship the meals and uh, they do something that i think is so special and so good during these times um they give back the they know how tough it is right now for trainers with what's going on with gyms and um everybody having to switch to online. So they have a partner program for trainers and gym owners. When you, you as a trainer or you as a gym owner, if you get your clients to purchase subscriptions, um, they're going to give you credit towards free food. So it's like a 10% reward uh, towards it. So like if they buy X amount, you get 10% back towards your own food. So you can like feed yourself from them and you're going to get the best food in the world. It just tastes so good. So, so good. Promise me you'll have the meatloaf. Um, I, so many things are so good. The scramble is one of my favorites. Uh, I'm just going to go on their website now and just look at everything they make. It's so good. I could talk about it for hours. I got to get back to the show. But try eat the 80com um, We have a special coupon code for you. It's WAD40. So you're going to get, um, if you sign up now, they're going to give you the first two orders. They're going to give you $20 off your first two orders for a total of $40 off. Does that sound good? I think it's great. So go to eatthe80.com and use the coupon code WAD40. That's eat the 80. So it's eat, E-A-T-T-H-E, and then the number 80.com. And is this your full-time business? Yeah, it is. Okay. Yeah. And uh, you say we. There's other people involved? Yeah, there's six people on my team um, and uh, coaches and people behind the scenes answering emails, things like that. So yeah, we've... We, as in team, have are the ones who do. I couldn't do it by myself. Yeah, and so there are a lot of people uh, helping out on on the back end. Well, it's a great name. Uh, the branding's excellent because it 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 brings in all of those um, uh, people that are out there that just don't want to go into a gym or have a home gym like mine. Or uh, and you know, I've had a ton of friends during the, this quarantine that have been like, "Hey, man, I need to work out now. What do I do?" And I don't have the time or the patience to tell them and I've done that before for relatives or something and then you become a full-time trainer and I realize how hard your job is and I'm like why did I just agree to do this for my nephew (laughs) or for you know even my wife sometimes will go hey I want a program and I'm like go on I'll tell you 50 places to go online like don't (laughs) don't like I can't even think of my own workouts every day to like come up with one for you and also I I was a personal trainer for a short time, but I have very little experience. So the last thing I want to do is send someone down the wrong road. Uh, But, uh, uh, you know, like there's a lot of good programs out there now. Like I can't believe how and how successful people are. I can't believe how many people are doing this and how how I, I, I just had a friend who dropped out of comedy. And he's like, he's like, well, I don't know where this comedy business is going. So. I'm just going to train people online and do And I was like, okay, well, you know, and he's like, it's, I've already picked up this many clients and da, 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 da. And I'm like, all right. Um, so, um, it's, it's a giant need, man. I'm you know, just with where, 
where the world's at in general, you know, and, and this whole, you know, the pandemic thing is, is really shaking things up. I think people realize they're going to have to take a little bit more responsibility in their, um, in their own fitness and health journey, you know, whether that's learning their own things or following a good program or something. But, um, yeah, they, I how, think that's just, how did you initially start it? Where'd you find your, uh, where'd you find your, uh, uh, your first clients? You know, so I was just, I was a garage gym athlete. That's how it started. Yeah. Um, back, at, I i had no money and my wife and I were a lot of debt when I first got in the military and I just didn't seem like it was, I was going to be realistic for me to to go to the gym. And so I started a garage gym, mm-hmm. uh, piecing together what I could, but I also didn't have the money to buy anything from like Rogue, who wasn't a very big company at that time, but still didn't have the the money. And so I just built everything. I built plyometric box, I built squat racks. I mean, like you name it, I built it. And uh, I just built it with wood. And I started posting those projects on my blog. And, like I started a blog to post those projects. And uh, that's how things kind of started. And people kind of found me. This is right on, uh, right around the time when like CrossFit was really ramping up. Rich Froning, you know, became the the poster boy for CrossFit at that time and stuff. And so uh, people were just looking for these things. So I, you know, I did the CrossFit level one cert and uh, learned as much as I could. And and really started way more in the, on the CrossFit side of things. And uh, people just started reaching out to me. And while I was in the military, I did um, in-person training for, for people, like as a part of my job for the military, uh, it's like a, a secondary responsibility. But then I also started getting remote clients from my website. So I'd only ever have like 10 or 15 people at a time, but that was like a side hustle, right? And uh, that's what I was doing. And primarily through the website is how I was getting people. And then that kind of just developed over time what was your uh what was your job in the military uh so i was a pilot first um in the air force and then uh, i got injured uh, and had to get surgery which ultimately led me out of of flying uh then i did communications in special operations command um for the until i basically got out because my, my job was my, my my dream was to be a fighter pilot and that's kind of what I, the path i was on until i got hurt if you don't mind me asking what was the injury uh, basically a really bad sports hernia. I, I, um, uh. was pulling G's in an aircraft and, and so it was like pre existing. I didn't know I had it, uh, got severely uh, worsened in the aircraft. Uh, and then just due to the timing and where the military was at at the time, I got surgery. They put me in the centrifuge, spun me around, still had pain. So they were just like, well, you, sorry, man, you're out. Like we don't have time to, time to keep dealing with this. So, so the G's can do damage to you like that? No, and that's why I like for people to know that it's pre-existing because uh, I probably got it from training, previous mm-hmm. training, and it just w- went unchecked. G's are G's are a, a dirty thing. Like uh, you know, I you probably most people have never experienced no. like nine G's before. If you've been on a roller coaster, a really fast one, maybe you experience four, maximum five, six G's. Nine G's is is a it's it's cool to say you've done but it's not fun to do even the slightest you can um the first time a couple times you do it you can take off your shirt and look at your body and you know, it'll look like you have uh blood pin pricks all over your body because all of your blood vessels have popped everywhere on your body and especially on your legs and stuff like that until your body gets used to it uh so yeah it's very painful but it's not something that should jack up your internal organs or abdominal wall like it did me uh, but it is something that happened due to a previous injury. Was that crushing for you? I mean, is that that was your dream? Yeah, I mean, that was it was pretty difficult. Um, I mean, I didn't dwell on it too long. It's just nothing, nothing beneficial from that. I I moved on, started a company, you know, as a side hustle, and then took it full time. But like that was that was pretty hard at first. Um, would they let I, you, would I, would they let you fly other planes? Uh, yeah, and see, that was the they would have for sure. They would we there's long dis- it took. You know, sometimes I tell the story, it sounds like I got hurt and then I was, I was out. That took 18 months. And so from when I got hurt to surgery was like the next day, recovery was pretty fast. So, and there was still a year and a half time period where I'm in this, you know, in the pilot world, but then they're really trying to explore every option. Can you fly a helicopter? Can you fly, you know, this uh, bigger aircraft, things like that. And, um, it just came down to like a financial thing. I was going to have to move financial thing for them. Not for me. They, they were gonna have to move me to a different lo- location and start me over, and they had budget cuts in the Air Force at that time, and they were like, eh, we're just not going to send them. You can just do uh, something else. Oh, so. uh, uh, that would suck. Um, and I guess people don't realize it's that's that's pretty elite, right, in the Air Force to get to that point where you're 
uh, a fighter pilot. Like that's that you got to be kind of the best of the best to get there, right? It, they do have a very rigorous selection process. Once you're there, it's not like the Navy SEALs where they're trying to get you out, but they don't ever want you in in the first place. So they they kind of take a the opposite of what the SEALs would do. They 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 run you through the ringer for like two and a half years before you get in, and then once you're in, you know you should be good to go as long as you do what you're supposed to study and you can fly well. But yeah, that's kind of the process. Because it's a uh, it's a lot more than I mean, there's so much to it, right? Like you have to be athletic, you've got to be smart, you've got to be. I mean, that's yeah. There's there's hand eye coordination, a lot of academics more than people realize. Um, there's a there's uh people know about military fitness tests. There's a specific one for fighter pilots where you have to do a certain amount of weight based off of like with squats and everything. So many reps in 60 seconds, you have to pass those times types of tests. Your eyes have to be basically perfect. You can't have anything wrong with your body basically anywhere. Um, there's just a lot of, a lot of stuff that goes into the selection process. And then don't those guys go on a lot to be astronauts? Yeah. If you're like, um, the top of the the fighter pilot world and that's something that interests you you can definitely go on to pursue being an astronaut how many times did you quote top gun never <laughs> <laughs> never come on never did you guys maybe may, maybe as a as a joke to like make fun of somebody did you guys did stupid. you guys ever play volleyball without your shirts on and jeans no what well, I, I tried to get it going though a few times but they just <laughs> the other the other guys weren't down where were you stationed uh, so I ultimately served at two locations. So it was um, Wichita Falls, Shepherd Air Force Base, and then also Herbert Field, Florida. Okay, I've Shepherd's been, in Texas. Yeah, I've yeah. been at uh, like the F one car races in Australia. Uh, one year they brought me as a guest, and uh, uh, I was sitting there, and the cars were like boring the shit out of me. I literally could care less about these F one cars, and then <laughs> all of a sudden the fighter pilots flew over. And I was like, that was the coolest thing I've ever seen in my life. And those guys, like, why are we here at this car race? Why don't we just say, hey, planes are going to fly over and do really cool <laughs> shit. Uh, like when they would shoot straight up into the air like and just disappear, I was like, oh, my God, they're in a rocket. This is amazing. Yeah. And they're so loud. It, it's just it, it's awesome. I can't imagine. Um, I've had a couple opportunities to uh, like the Blue Angels one time asked if I wanted to go up and and I, I uh, you know, oh, you should have done it, man. I know I, I probably would do it today. I've just I've flown in some small planes with some friends and yeah. I'm nervous enough in that. That I that's way safer in an F eighteen if you're going to Blue Angels than your friend Cessna. Like it's gonna, oh my oh my friend you're gonna be all right. <laughs> my, my my friend Cessna was the scariest shit I've ever done in my entire true story. Yeah. I get in his plane. I'm I lived in uh, I lived in England for a while doing stand up comedy, and he was a buddy from high school, and he was living over there working for Ford Motor Company, and he got into airplanes and he bought a a nineteen like sixty four Cessna or something. It was so old. I remember when I opened the glove compartment, it just fell off and oh, nice. just shit just looked bad. And yeah. uh, I'd parachuted a couple of times out of shitty planes that I would like couldn't wait to get out of the plane where I was like, oh, this thing's going to go down. I got to get out now. And uh, you're like, I'm begging the pilot. Can we jump yet? <laughs> and uh, so his plane looked like that. And he calls me and he said, hey, where's your gig this week? And I said, oh, I'm in Wales. I'm in Cardiff, Wales. And I was living in London. He goes, oh, I'll take you. I was like, okay. He's like, meet me at this uh, airport and we'll fly down. I was like, all right. So I get in the plane with him and he was pretty crazy in high school. He had a drink named after him in high school called a Jeff special that was three different hundred proof alcohols. Mm. And we would go to this bar in high school in Sharpsburg. It was called uh, Lafayette Hotel and they would serve high school kids just blatantly. No, no <laughs> ass for ID. Right? Just sit down. Yeah. I mean, it was like a dive bar in a little steel town kind of, and we would sit there and drink 300 proof shots together in high school. Yeah. And, uh, so that was Jeff. So I get in his plane and he goes, Hey, do you want to taxi it down the runway? <laughs> I'm like, I just got in your plane. I'm not feeling good about this at all. So he's like, just steer it down the runway. And he's showing me how. So I steer it down the runway. He's like, they're going to tell you to go to this 
pole or whatever, this number. And then you go to this one. He He's doing all the talking. To, we get down and he goes, all right, put the brake on. He's like, put the throttle up the whole way. So I do it. He goes, all right, you're going to take off. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> and I go, wait a minute. I did not. And I was like, I don't want to do this. And uh, he's like, just, it's so easy. He's like, all you're going to do when the, when the, 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 the needle gets to here, you're going to start pulling back slowly. He's like, as soon as they say go, you know, whatever, you're going to let off the brake and throttles already down. We're going to go. And then you're going to, the needle hits here. You're going to pull back slowly. And this is good how you steer. And you're just going to keep it level. And I'm like, Jeff, I do not want to do this. He's like, oh, you're fine, man. You're fine. And I'm like, no, we're going to die. And he's like, trust me. He's like, I have my controls right here if anything goes wrong. And I was like, all right. So I do it. And I guess I had had uh, the map underneath me. And it was like a laminated map. I could hear drips of sweat. Just going, <laughs> poof, poof, like all, like it was covered in sweat. My hands were sweating so bad. And I just, I absolutely hated it. So when the Blue Angels were like, hey, you should come up with us. I was like, yeah. <sighs> They probably won't let you take off, but <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> the, ta- the taking off is the easy part. It's the landing. Yeah, that's what he told me. Up. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, he, he also, we flew over Stonehenge one day. We flew over some other area where we got chased out. Like uh, uh, we got a call. We were being escorted at, or we needed to leave this area or something. So then we landed at his airport. Come, this is coming home. And one of the other pilots was like, hey, where'd you fly today, Jeff? And he told him, and he's like, you know, that's illegal. <laughs> and he was this was after 9 11 he flew over in a single engine plane flew over london and he's oh, like wow. he's like you're not allowed to fly over the city with a single engine plane you're lucky they didn't shoot you down he's like y- that's so dangerous and uh he's like you went over stonehenge that's a military training jeff's like i've done it before he's like no stop <laughs> 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 and so my experience with that uh, with flying is just not uh it's more of like the being trapped like that blue angel guy's in charge and yeah. he can do to me what he wants you know it's like it's like it's basically like wrestling with like a an mma fighter he's gonna he's gonna do things to you you don't want done yeah i mean he'll probably try and make you throw up but yeah you're either you're either the guy who will or you're the guy who won't though so it's like you yeah. either pass out or throw up and like it doesn't really matter i love like, those i love those videos on the internet when you just see people pass out. <laughs> that, is, that is one of my favorite things to watch is people in planes, uh, like fighter planes or whatever you call them, like jet planes, passing out. Or the pu- the puke's gross because it's inside the... Yeah, they don't want you to do that either because it could get on them. So, But passing out, yeah, that's, that's probably just fun for them. When you first went up, did you have any kind of weird experience? No, and that's the... When you start pilot training, that's the big thing because there's no way to practice that. There's no way to find out if you're a, a guy who passes out or if you're a guy who throws up or gets air sick because it's just a different, it's not like flying in a, you know, a commercial airliner or anything like that, or even a Cessna. It's so much different. Um, you just praying that you're not the one who is going to get sick or whatever. And that they have a lot of things they can do for people who, who get sick and training programs they put them on. But I was not, I was fortunate enough to like, I don't pass out. I don't get sick. Um, I'm just good to go. Mm. So how'd you end up in Dallas? Uh, so I grew up in this area oh, okay. when I was in high school. Well, grew up. I, yeah, I did middle school and high school here. And then uh, my family's here. So once I got out of the military, we moved back. Were you, you mentioned earlier you were a sprinter. Uh, did you do any other sports? Uh, I mean, I played football, um, racquetball, which sounds funny, but I actually did that competitively um, in high school and through college. And then... Uh, sprinting track and field out yeah that was it what was your event and track uh, 100 meter and 200 meter okay. and that was it yep yeah that doesn't that doesn't translate to murph no i was just um i i well i did try out on the 400 in like four by four relay and stuff uh, but there were guys who could just like smoke me in that distance and so yeah i, I did have really short term sprint speed that didn't last for very long but i don't know it yeah, you're you're preaching to the choir. I'm the same way. All type A. <laughs> All, I I recently heard an interesting test that you can do. I wanted to check. Uh, my daughter's super fast, and uh, and I and I was wondering if she can still run distance too because I just couldn't. And um, an interesting thing. I don't know if this is anecdotal or it's if there's 
anything clinical to it, but uh, uh, the uh, not clinical, but uh, any uh, proof at least to the fact that you have someone do a vertical jump Mm -hmm. and you just kind of observe it. And if they if they get far down, like squat really far down. They're more slow twitch muscle fiber. And if they just do a leap with just a tiny bit of compression, um, then it's more fast twitch. And I'd like to I'd like to kind of see I know it's true for myself. I'm I'm very much a fast twitch muscle fiber person. And when I do do a vertical, I just tiny, tiny bit of compression. Yeah, that that holds up in my brain and through my experience. Like anytime if you, if you're asking someone to jump and they are squatting to parallel to start the jump, you're like this isn't going to be good. Yeah, so, <laughs> <laughs> um, so your your fastest time, what do you think you've done it in, Murph? Murph. So it would be definitely partitioned. Um, would be right around twenty six minutes. What? Yeah, twenty six minutes. Yeah, and some change. Holy smokes! Wait, so 26 partitioned with the vest. With the vest, yeah. You're, okay, you're a freak. Um, if somebody saw you, I've been all over your Instagram stalking, it's a little weird to tell you that. Um, you don't look like that. You're not built like Rich Froning or, no, well, but not. Matt Fraser's not built like, you know, <laughs> not many people are built like Rich Froning, but, you know, sometimes you see someone and that, would say they do that and you'd go oh okay that makes sense you're four percent body fat and you look like you have pecs that you know are are basketball you know whatever it is um you don't have that appearance of a guy that does a 26 minute i've never heard that before that's ridiculous yeah i mean i don't know what that guy looks like though because if you're only good at push-ups and uh running you know you're some weird you're almost an endurance athlete. You know what I mean? Yeah, but I mean, uh, like David Goggins is still ripped to shreds, and and that's yeah. all he does. No, and, and and so by all means, like here's my my whole take on this: like Hunter going after it, like you know my involvement in that or whatever is. I feel the same way that you do. Like if I'm the guy that I'll I'll rise to the occasion if I'm the guy, but I really don't feel like I should be the guy, and it's not because of um, anything else other than the fact that I train maybe an hour a day. I do Murph once a week and I, I haven't since February. I've been taking it off after that second year concluded, but I, I, I just never trained for it. Like I never been like, you know what? This is the Murph program squats. Let's see. How, like I, I've never been on that program. Like, so if I'm the guy training an hour a day, four or five times a week, and I do a hard workout on Saturday that I feel like that's unfortunate. Like, I don't feel like I should be the guy. I but, think I might know how to suffer a little bit more than I But I don't know anyone who has done Murph as many times as you, you have. And there is an adaptation to anything. And right. if you're doing something and you just keep getting fast, when you started doing it, how fast do you think you did it? Yeah, my first times were in the 50s. Wow. Yeah. And, and so, and it's gone. And, and the reason I was saying all that is because I always thought if, especially when I first started doing it, like I never thought my times were anything special at all, and I was like, if if Josh Bridges or Matt Fraser wanted to make Murph their workout, I would not stand a chance. You right, know what I mean? Like right, right. that was all, and, and that's how kind of how I felt with when, when I first started hearing about Hunter. I was like, I know for a fact, just being familiar with uh, you know uh, trail races in Spartan and all that stuff, I knew who Hunter was, and I was like, this dude could run circles around me. Like he can run fast. Like I know he's fast, and he's got everything in his wheelhouse to be able to do this. And so I was like. If this guy wants the record, it is going to be his because I don't feel like I could I could do it. And then once I heard that we're just and he might throw down like a, a 27 minute unpartitioned. That's something I haven't done. Uh, and I feel like partitioned and unpartitioned are, are, are I mean, uh, yeah, unpartitioned are very different. And they do add add a lot of time to each workout. Uh, but I just felt like with that, I was like, he'll he'll for sure do it. And he might. Well, we'll see what happens in a, in a couple of days. But um I, I just felt like he would be, he could possibly be the fastest time. Um, and yeah, I think that he I, w- I wouldn't count, be. I wouldn't count out this guy, Matty White out of Australia either. He, uh, yeah, I'm just not familiar with him, yeah. but I'm sure like he's, uh, I'm sure he's a badass if he's got some pretty fast times. I checked on so, him yeah. with, I checked on him with, uh, with James Newberry and James, you know, 
no slouch himself, came in fourth at the games, and he's a freak of an athlete. And James is like, this guy, any endurance stuff just, just destroys me. So, and I said, how are his reps? He said, they're all good, blah, 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 blah. He's like, he's, he's the real deal. So um, I, I don't think it's going to be as easy as Hunter thinks it is. Um, how much of a time difference do you think there is between partition and unpartitioned? For me, mm-hmm. um, I mean, it can be four and five minute difference. Interesting. Um, yeah. So what I've gone sub 30 um, unpartitioned, but it's not like a 28 minutes. It, it, I've been like bumping up right up against that 30 minute. And so if he goes well, well below that, that's awesome. I mean, that's, that's huge and not something that, that I've completed, but, um, it, it adds, it adds a lot of time. And I really do think it's not the harder version of the workout. I think people think that sometimes the harder version, especially if, if you're, if you are into CrossFit and you believe in the CrossFit methodology, doing the same amount of work in the least amount of time, that's like Mm -hmm. CrossFit 101, physics, 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 that's more work. And so if, if you're both doing the same workout with a vest on and one person decides to partition and the other doesn't, it's the same amount of work done faster. So it's harder. And it actually is harder because I've done it. Like I said, I've done it all these other ways. And I've always, I, I've done a lot of the unpartitioned because I don't know, I've done it strict too. Like I've just done a lot of different ways. You get bored. <laughs> yeah. You get bored. You do it different ways. And then I just never found the, um, unpartitioned, as challenging because you would get to muscle fatigue or failure at some point, like and it may, maybe it's like at 80 pull-ups and I'm not saying you can't do any more, but maybe you're having to string together like three, four, five reps drop three. And it's just a little bit slower when in that time period, I could be doing squats or push-ups to like constantly be pushing it to the right. Line. Right. And so right. I, I, I feel like partitioning point. is, is harder. Um, but mentally most people for some reason, they just say, unpartitioned is the harder version in my experience i don't agree with that um but it is it is a slower way to do it for have sure. you have you ever tried like 246 or uh you know any other version of it yeah i've tried i've tried two rounds i've tried uh 20 rounds i've tried 10 rounds i've tried five rounds um i've never done the super the 20 rounds is the most rounds i've i've done so i haven't done like less than that and 5 10 15 seems to be the fastest because after you get pretty good at um all the calisthenics there's never a reason to stop right there's, right there's never right, a reason to stop right. with 5 10 15 and so it's, at that point it's just a matter of how fast can you focus on your repetitions because muscle failure is not a thing anymore after you've done it enough times sure so, so if you like, so if you were doing two four six it's a lot of getting up getting down it's a transition yeah. Yeah. yeah and so and then what i found out with breaking it into like 10 rounds or five rounds is there would even if you don't need to take that break that you might cycle your pull-ups a little bit slower or your push-ups are still getting done, but they might just be a fraction and fractions of a second matter when you're trying to get these sub 30 times. And so it all matters. And so I think the the fastest way for me has been the 5, 10, 15, because I don't have a reason to stop. I don't re- reach muscle failure on it. And so those 20 rounds of 5, 10, 15 have always been the the fastest way for me to do it. Last year, I tried 5, 5, 15, 5. So five, okay. five, yeah. five pull-ups, five push-ups, 15 squats, five push-ups. Yeah, we've had a lot of people um, talk about doing it that way because uh, a lot of people burn out on the push-ups. Mm-hmm. And and so if you break it up double, I have done it that way uh, one time towards the beginning because it takes a while. Like even I've been off February, March, April. I haven't done Murph in three months. Um, and so getting back into it, like this Memorial Day is going to be really painful, um, the, the actual doing of it. And my push-ups might be a little bit slower, but then two, three weeks later, it'll all come back, you know, and that's, that's typically how it, how it comes. But the, once they're back or if you practice pushups a lot, there's no real reason to, to have to slow down or stop anymore. Well, you're, you're 10,000 times more of a man than I am. And, uh, <laughs> I'd love to see you go head to head with Hunter. It'd be fun. Uh, he is going to be doing it on Saturday in North Carolina on some military base with a whole bunch of guys and then I think Maddie White is doing it on what is our Memorial Day, which is uh, uh, that would be their Monday or their Tuesday in Australia. Um, so our Monday. And uh, he's a firefighter and, uh, you know, doing it for all the right reasons and everything. I, I think it's great. I think anything like, you know, a lot of people have given Hunter some shit for this, like he gets and everything. But anything to bring more awareness to it. Why not? And he's raising money. He's doing a good thing. And uh, I think some of the big name CrossFitters are a little mad uh, because I think 
he's cherry picking and some of them couldn't do this. And so they're like, he's grandstanding about one event, you know, when we can do all of them. <laughs> and uh, I mean, I don't know why any CrossFitters would be mad. They've already, they've already had Hunter at the games, yeah. you know? So like that they know, but, and it's true. And that's like, you bring up the point of like, I've done one workout over and over again. I'm pretty good at it. But a CrossFitter could destroy me and everything else. You right. Know, Fran, you're, you're probably going to beat me. Well, you know? I'll, and, t- I'll tell you why. And it's, um, CrossFit has a weird, like anything, has a weird bit of narcissism to it. And uh, people love their media time and their uh, attention that they get. Everybody in life is looking for significance. And when somebody else is getting significance or – and Hunter is very good at getting uh, exposure – and get I mean, look, I've been talking about this for a month because the, the, the asshole doesn't stop talking to me about it. So uh, he's very good at getting media attention. He's been on tons of TV shows and this and that, and whatever. And so I think it's a little bit of that. Um, it happens in my business in stand up comedy. You'll see a guy who isn't half the comedian that you are, but they're somehow on every TV show and doing everything. And they just are good at that. I mean, look, people probably, a lot of people don't like Donald Trump for that reason only that he's really good at getting media attention. And there's a difference between being great at something and getting, now luckily Hunter is great at what he did and he was a world champion. But um, I think the CrossFitters look at him like, Hey, you're coming into our world. We're better than you. And somehow, (laughs) you know, you're one of the focal points. And I, I kind of agree, like, not, I mean, to be honest, I don't, it is a CrossFit workout. It's very much a CrossFit workout, but it's not cycling thrusters or, you know, whatever sure, else sure, or sure. snatch. So I do think Hunter has a chance, but I also think that if a, um, has a chance, I mean, like he, he's probably the front runner cause no one else is even trying. Right. Yeah. Um, but I do think if a CrossFitter got serious about it, mm-hmm. they might be the person to deal with, but they're not going to, cause if Matt Frazier wanted sure. to. Sure. Matt Fraser needs to balance 30 different areas of fitness. Exactly. And he's pretty good at Murph in doing so, but he's not going to only train for Murph and that be his thing. You know, so I, I think, think I think Matt Fraser could give him a really, really good run for his money in this event. Um, although I, I was just if you watch the 2016 one when they do it, I was I was amazed that Josh Bridges didn't run faster than he did. Um, I timed. Granted, they did have a bottleneck at the beginning. And had to go up steps and down steps, but that was just, mm-hmm. you know, you know, out of a stadium, still kind of tough, but there, his mile was like, the first one was in about eight minutes and the second one was 922. And yeah, it's that's just, really slow. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, they are like, if I was Bridges, I'm not trying to set a, a record. If I'm in, it, it is like the old froning approach, right? You're like, I'm in first place. If he could have got first place and done a 13 minute mile, I would have done the same thing because I'm saving myself for the rest of the competition. Sure, sure. And he and he's the he's the front runner. He wasn't he wanted to win that event, but he wasn't trying to set any records because sure. he knew Hunter McIntyre was coming later. You know, like he just wanted to win the event, and he did. I, could Bridges do it faster? But Absolutely. but 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 you say that, and you've got to remember that there's guys there's guys in the back of the pack that this might be their standout event, mm-hmm. and so they might go for it. And so they're going to give it a hundred percent. And then Josh to get his points has to beat that guy. So they are pushing. I've, I've talked to a lot of games athletes on this show about that. I'm like, how much do you hold back? Cause you know, I ran track two and you do preliminary semis finals and you always, I don't know why. And I don't think it helps at all, but you know, how you in the hundred meters, you let up for the last 10 meters uh, yeah. in the prelims or the, uh, the semis. Cause you're like, I don't, I don't, I don't want to blow it. I got to say, how much are you actually using in that last hundred meters that you're going to, but you do, you're like, I'm in the lead. I, I qualifying for the semis. I'm just going to ease off. I get that about the games athletes going, Hey, you know, I got to, but when you've got somebody coming at your heels and you're like, I need these points or I don't think 2016 had the money where each event you win, you get the money. And so a lot of those guys need that $3,000 or whatever it is to win an event. So they're going to push you. I think that he just, you know, he was the best at it and that's where they were coming in. I, I just, I'm. Yeah. If he let up at all, I'm not saying he, he sandbagged. I'm saying like if he, cause I don't, I don't, can't fully recall, but if I think they set it up to where like if, if he was the last person or, or the first person running, 
and no one's in, in front of him, then he knows he's currently first place because I didn't know that mile time until you just said it. But if he's running a nine minute and some change mile, I bet if he had someone right on his ass, that would have been a seven and a half, eight minute mile. You know what I mean? Like he probably could have gone just a little bit. Right, right, right. Let up on just in, that, yeah. in the last portion. I think if you know you're winning and you have, um, you know, 400 meters left. It's, sure, it's sure, 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 sure. Sure. And that 400 meters is where you make a lot of time. Uh, people don't realize yeah. you can make up 10, 15 seconds or 20 seconds just by kicking it in. Um, all right. Well, this has been awesome. Um, tell us a little bit more about your business so people listen, because I appreciate you doing the show and I'd love to plug your business. And, uh, you know, people want to follow what you're doing. Yeah. So if you want to, we're Garage Gym Athlete on Instagram. I'm at EO3Fit on Instagram. If you want to check, uh, out, I don't post that much, but we post more on Garage Gym Athlete. Um, and if you do like programming, um, you can check that out, Garage Gym Athlete. And I actually just have a, a book come out, um, this week called Killing Comfort. So if you want to check out the book, uh, talk about things like this, doing Murph, doing bike races, doing marathons and, uh, how to get uncomfortable more we, often. We didn't even get into the bike racing. What's the, what's the bike racing thing? Uh, yeah. So I did kind of like the marathon, um, after the marathon, I was like, what's next? And so I did a hundred mile untrained bike race. So just to see if I could do it. And, uh, that was, I, I normally choose endurance events cause I'm not really an endurance athlete. That's mm-hmm. why like people hear that and they're like, Oh, this guy must love endurance. I really don't. Um, I'm getting more into cycling, but I actually kind of hate endurance. And that's why I would choose these events. Cause I feel like it really pushed me out of my comfort zone. Um, but yeah, that one was, uh, that was brutal. I came in like second to last place in the hundred mile bike race. Oh. I lost the use of my left hand, uh, like mile 70 and get it, didn't get it back for like three or four weeks. Why? And Why? Something called, uh, I was, I was improperly fitted on my bike cause uh-huh. it wasn't, it was a bike I bought for a hundred bucks on Amazon made out of like pure steel and it had a single speed. It wasn't even like a good bike and, uh, I was improperly fitted. And so I was pressing on the handlebars too hard. And there's something called handlebar palsy, um, jacks up the nerves in your hand. Um, and I didn't realize this until I got off my bike at mile 70. I went to go grab some sunscreen from the, the medical tent and I reached my hand out and I just knock over the can of sunscreen. Ah. And, I, and I was like, what just happened? Like what? And then uh, they were giving me some really weird looks. I didn't want them to tell. I realized I couldn't use my left hand anymore. And I, I was like, oh, so I grabbed it with my right hand and then walked over and used the hand, uh, the, the sunscreen. And then I, that's when I realized like, I can't use my left hand. Like I'm just going to have to kind of strap it to the bike and finish. And, uh, that's, that's what I did, but I thought it would come back like the next day. It took a long time, like multiple weeks. And it's very scary, but I had a, oh, I imagine. a phys- physical therapist friend who told me like, this is something that happens. Here's what you need to do about it. And, and got me fixed up. Had oh, I not it, what had- is it like a trap nerve? Yeah. Like, I don't know. I don't know the, uh, the mechanics behind it i just I, I would I, my stupid idiot stand-up comedian diagnosis all i would believe because i had bell's palsy is that um a nerve and which paralyzes uh the seventh cranial nerve in your face gets paralyzed uh because there's inflammation in kind of the the tunnel that it runs through mm-hmm. i imagine there was some kind of inflammation and it trapped the nerve and so the nerve then doesn't work anymore. So no feeling or sensation. I'm going to look it up because funny enough, I'm buying a bike right now for, I'm going to do the Ironman and, uh, that fits important. Yeah. And like, I uh, said to my friend who's got tons of bikes and he's super rich, I was like, just give me one of yours. And he's like, you got to get fitted. You got to get a bike built for you. And don't, and I'm like, I don't give a shit. Just give me one. And he was like, you got to get a, a, a triathlon bike. Cause I just was going to get a road bike. Cause I live in the Hills. And he's like, no. I was like, I'll strap some arrow bars to it. He goes, no, get a triathlon bike, you idiot. And uh, so now that you just told me this, I'm a hypochondriac. I'm going to Google, what's it called? Handlebar palsy. palsy. Yeah. And now I'm getting a bike fitted. Well, so I've done the 100-mile bike race since uh, in in subsequent years and been no problem. So I got a more expensive bike. I got fitted by the guys at the bike shop. Like everything's been fine. It's really just... If you're riding a crappy bike and you're improperly fitted, it's a problem. But it hasn't been a problem any other time I've done it. So, so you've got the cycling, you've done the marathon. Are you going to do an Ironman? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Um, maybe down the road. I have three young kids right now. So, what I talked about my training schedule, like max hour per day stuff, like I'm sticking to that for the foreseeable future until they're a little bit older. Of course, I love fitness, so uh, triathlon is something I might get into later. But right now, I don't think I realistically have the time, and that's not. 
that's not one of those that you really go into untrained. You know, like I don't want to drown in the swim. So I will, uh, I will wait. I will wait on those events. <laughs> so you're going to be doing Murph in, in uniform on uh, this Monday. Mm-hmm. Um, we'd love no, to. Oh, Saturday. I'm actually going to do it Saturday. Oh, Saturday. We'd love to hear how you do. Um, uh, you're doing a partition, though, correct? Uh, yeah. Oh, it'd be nice. I, 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 actually, I hadn't decided yet, but um, it'd be great if you did an unpartition and you beat Hunter in combat boots. If I, yeah, if that happens, uh, he's gonna have to train harder. I don't know. Um, so far, fastest time I've ever heard. So what is what is your twenty six? Do you know the exact? I, I it might be like twenty six twelve or fifteen. Nice. Um, I could look it up in my training logs. By far, I, by far the fastest I've heard. So and partitioned. Uh, yep. Because you know, when people when people start talking, so here's the thing: like it's funny, we have a lot of athletes in garage gym athlete. I announced I was doing another year of Murph, and there, I mean, there's a guy on my team who got like 27, and Ooh. there there are other guys in the community who got to like 32, 33, sub 30, and and so I know it, it sounds crazy, but like we may have one of the largest groups or communities of people doing Murph every week. So it, it sounds crazy if you're doing Murph once a year. Sure. Yeah, that sounds ludicrous. But I mean, it, it seems so normal for me because I have 20 other guys nipping at my heels in our athletic community who only decided to do Murph once a year as a part of this like challenge that we were doing or once a week um, for a year. And I feel like if you're training it that regularly, you're going to get faster at it. Like I bet if I don't know how long Hunter's been training for it, but I'm going to guess it's not that long No. And and so I think if he was like, oh, I didn't get the time I wanted, or I think that time's awesome, I guarantee if he just did it every Saturday sure, until sure, next sure. Memorial sure. Day, he's going to shave off like four or five minutes, and then my time's not going to sound that that impressive anymore. Well, you know, every every I, everything's incremental. I tried to explain that to my wife the other night because I've taken up guitar and I stink, and she was like, "You're terrible," and I was like, "Yeah, but I'm getting better," and she's like, "Yeah, but you're still terrible," and I was like, <laughs> "It's an incremental thing. It's not like somebody plays guitar and th- you know." two weeks later they're playing eruption by van halen um it everything in life i feel like every single thing i've done you might show signs of being good at it in the beginning but like you said you it took you like almost an hour or whatever to do murph your first time and now you have one of the fastest times if not the fastest time i've ever heard so it just shows everybody out there that it's persistence and it's you got to do things over and over and over and you'll continually incrementally get better and uh, there's no like, you know, get rich quick. There's no all of a sudden you're a natural. I don't believe in naturals. I believe that anyone that's a natural works hard at what they do. And um, so, you know, you you just learned how to, you know, you're a good athlete, but you just it, it's the same with all the CrossFitters. When I always thought that like athletes would come into the CrossFit games and kill Froning and kill for these like pro athletes that dropped yeah. out of the NFL and they don't. Because these guys incrementally got better and better and better and better and better over the years. And that's why someone like Ben Smith is still going to the games every year. Um, yeah, that, that could have happened in like 2010. But like once once it became a legitimate sport and people were doing what they're doing, there's no there's no catching these guys. They're, they're just professional athletes in a different sport. And you're not going to be able to, you know, um, Roger Federer is not going to go play in the NFL. And likewise, Tom Brady's not going to go be awesome at tennis. Like it's just it's not what's going to happen. These guys have dedicated their life to one thing and that's what they've gotten good at and i mean similarly and you know from here what what i would like to do with with murph I, i'd love to see hunter's time um coming up um and then if it's something uh you know we want to challenge back and forth that's great uh my only plan is to to get like a a video of of me doing it with everything since apparently the guinness won't recognize it from what i heard from yeah really weird yes and so i would just like to get um Cause I do Murph at home. Like I, I, I'd, ha- I'd have to prove in video that how far I run is a mile. You know, we yeah, have to like do all, yeah. all these little things like to show people, like measure it with GPS. Uh, but I would like to just get one videoed uh, for people because um, I don't. I guess it's Hunter's fault. But I, how many emails and direct messages I get on Instagram now about Murph has been like crazy. Um, mm. And so, uh, which isn't hasn't been the case previous. I've been doing it for two years and no one's like asked me about murph that much and then hunter's going for the unofficial world record and i get a message every other day about um, he's he's the donald trump of uh of uh 
fitness. He just he, he starts blabbing <laughs> and everyone starts talking about it. Uh, yeah. Uh, Oh, I'll that, still be focused on Murph when he's on to his next challenge. That's, he, that's and he will be next. Uh, he just told me he's doing a hundred mile, uh, hundred mile hike that he's doing. That's uh, I, I'm not going on this one. Um, <laughs> but I have a question for you. What did you think of Donald Trump Jr.'s? Uh, did you see when he posted about Murph and then subsequently removed it? Mur- removed I, the I had not seen that. What oh, you happened? don't know this story? It's hilarious. No. So. Years ago, maybe three years ago, uh, he posted, and I guess he does CrossFit at a gym in upstate New York, and he said, hey, I did Murph today, uh, not as good as my best time of 34 minutes. I think it was 34, he said. Mm -hmm. Uh, Today, went a little slower because I did it, I did it in like 36 or something, and my son ran the miles with me, and... He did it on, you know, no weight vest and uh, everybody started looking into it and they're like, wait a minute, you know, like he didn't show any of his reps, but he said my seven year old son did it with me and everybody did the math and they're like, okay, if you did 36, that means you ran, if you're doing a 20 minute Cindy, you do 16 minute, uh, two eight minute miles, your seven year old runs eight minute miles. Okay. That's, that's a little, I forget whatever it was. It was like. And then people started looking, finding his times posted on the whiteboard and everything beyond the whiteboard. And they saw that his best 5K time was like 27 minutes or something. And they're like, wait, okay. So all of a sudden you can do this. And he had said that his best time was like 34 or something. And everybody's like, you're a liar. So the comments started being like, it was so like, partisan it's hilarious you see all the republican conservative postings like you're the man d you know d tate d tate d t j or whatever he is you're the coolest way to do it for america and then the other ones are like you're a fucking liar (laughs) (laughs) every other one was like you're the best you're a liar you're the best you're a liar there's no way and so it became this uh point of contention that I think because the CrossFit community is so psychopathic when it comes to, you know, reps and standards and everything, that they weren't going to let him off the hook on this. And there was no way. And I think he knew he saw that, he, you know, that he had just looked into the belly of the beast and he was like, I got to get out of this. Yeah. This, this, these are worse <laughs> than like the liberal media. These are the CrossFitters and they are going to tear me apart. And they were. They were salivating to bring him down and just admit, like, prove that he was lying. And and the truth is, I do, I agree. I think he lied. I think he yeah. completely lied that his standards, so many people, I watched the Murph, all the celebrities doing it at that gym in Hollywood. None of them had the standards. And look, if you're doing it, you're doing it. But at the end of the day, if you're going to, like, boast about it, you better. Even I don't say I do Murph because I don't do it without the I do it without the vest. I have done it with the vest, but, like, I'm doing it on Monday. I will not wear a vest. And so I won't be going, I did Murph. Um, but, uh, yeah, so Donald Trump, bullshit. I can't believe you haven't heard about that. No, I haven't. And, and I mean, that's, I mean, 34, like, anytime you get in sub-35, those are crazy respectable respectable times i mean that that was my goal for a long time and then it was sub 30 and then it was just like okay what the hell can we do from here and and i've i've heard like when hunter posted about this some people tagged me in his post and they were like this guy can do it in 26 or whatever and um and hunter's response was basically like this guy would have to be thanos that's not possible he'd have to run five minute miles I'm like just do the math on it man like if you can get your each round of cindy to a round somewhere between 35 and 40 seconds and you're a halfway decent runny runner you're there like yeah. it's not this ridiculous and i don't know what i, I think so many put it, people put it on a pedestal like i said because it's a once per year workout um but yeah like getting um sub 35 is is phenomenal especially if you're doing it once a year like that's crazy that's yeah. really crazy yeah so you could probably google it and find it somewhere i'll look for it somebody probably but i know he removed the post <laughs> off Instagram. Which, oh, I'm sure there's a blog post about it somewhere. Which, oh, uh, well, Armin, Armin, Armin started it, who used to be my partner on the show. He went, he, and Armin's so funny, so passively aggressive, passively aggressively wrote the title of his post when he was working at, uh, uh, he was, I forget the company he was working for in Texas, but he wrote, Donald Trump Jr. is better at Murph than you. And he was nice. just, 
instigating and everybody just declared war so uh uh funny enough i don't know if he'll be doing it i'll be doing it you'll be doing it i you should film yours though so people so we can show on earth that you do it in a uniform and combat boots and uh <laughs> I'll, i won't be filming mine because mine's gonna suck i got tendonitis so uh how do you keep from the elbows the elbows with all those pull-ups i i don't know that's never I've never really been a problem i think um like I said, the only thing I ever run into was the knee, the, yeah. just the squats. Cause that you, you mentioned, like you could get a little bit faster. Like you could, everyone could push themselves faster on that, on the last mile. I think mm-hmm. there's always a little bit left in the tank there, but it's the squats. Like that's where everyone, that's where all the time is. All of it. Uh, oh, see um, the squats are easy for me. Um, yeah, and I can go fast. Like how fast are you cycling the squats? Yeah, and, and the squats are fast. The run crushes me. That last mile crushes me. Crushes whenever me. I watch people do it, I'm like, they 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 squat up they full open hip i i know the standards they're up but then there's like a pause like a lot of people pause there's like this pause after the hips open like like hello i'm here and then they go back down and it still seems fast but to cycle fast you need to open those hips and immediately go back down open the hips immediately go back down until you can't do that anymore as fast as you possibly can and that's where most of the time is uh is made up in murph yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. I got hands on the knees. I'm choking, <laughs> lying on the ground. I'm rolling over. Uh, I'm an old guy, though. Uh, but uh, congratulations on all your achievements. Your book comes out when? Uh, May 19th is the official date. May 19th. And they can find that at your website. Or are you going to be on Amazon, too? Yeah, you go to Amazon. Uh, it'll be on Audible a week after the 19th if you're into the audiobooks. And yeah, called Killing Comfort. Awesome. Well, Jared, thank you very much. Keep in touch. Uh, I'd love to hear uh, more of your accomplishments, too. And I, I think it's great what you do. And uh, I think Hunter's a pussy. So, uh, um, and I told him. I've met him. Se- seems like a great guy. Where, he, we, probably ha- he probably hates me already and doesn't even know me. Where did you, you did meet him? Uh, well, we, he, when, when all this Murph stuff uh, kicked off, he was like, I got to know if your times are legit. Call me. And so we. <laughs> <laughs> We, we chatted on the phone for like five minutes and he's like all right <laughs> such a hundred thing to do <laughs> hilarious all right well uh uh thanks for listening to the show thanks for being the guest thanks for uh you guys uh are always the best rate review comment and um don't come see any of my shows because i i don't have any anymore they don't exist and we never know when they will when i come to uh dallas though jerry i'll let you know and you can come down to hyenas it's one of my favorite clubs there in dallas uh, but uh, yeah that's it so thanks for listening guys